Spencer Johns is a senior engineer working for the Royal National Lifeboat Institution. He's a member of a team responsible for keeping the fleet of lifeboats up and running. We're following Spencer during a typical working day to find out just how important life skills, numeracy, literacy and ICT are in his work. And you'll have the opportunity to go online and develop similar skills for yourself. Look out for the web address later in the programme. My role as an engineer is sorting out uh, mostly any mechanical problems or issues with the existing boats. If we get any problems or faults, we have to sort them out. And also uh, developing designing new systems and equipment for the, for the new boats for the future. Standard things, I'll come in, switch my computer on, check my emails, check uh, if there's anything new in me in training, new task. Um, and then I'll actually get on with the, the next either current task or high priority task that I'm working on for that moment. Morning, Spence. Right, right. right, cheers. Tasks uh, will be delivered to me in tray. Um, I'll check the priority on them, and then if it's obviously urgent, I'll have to move to that task straight away. And then if not, I'll, I'll put it with the other tasks and uh, make sure I work on it when, when I've got time. Here today, I've got to start working on a drawing for uh, an engine gauge unit that we need to get uh, fabricated. Um, I've got to go and uh, do a little trial on, on the aircon control unit and then later on I've got to go across to one of the boats and just check some of the engine settings with the laptop. His day is split between time in the office and time out on the boats. This morning he's on the new Tamar class. As a boat enthusiast, he's at home surrounded by the advanced technologies buried deep under the deck. Right, this is a new Tamar class lifeboat. It's a state-of-the-art uh, fast slip by boat. Um, this is soon to replace the Titan class and I'll be responsible for the mechanical systems on board. One of those systems is a new air conditioning unit for the vessel. And one of the first jobs of the day is to run bench tests on the new unit. As we'll see later, numeracy skills play a big role in this and other aspects of his work on these boats. Mount this. What I did last time was I put it on the bench. There's some rubber feet in the box. Uh, we're just trialling out the new uh, aircon controller and just doing a bit of bench testing, check all the, uh, the loads are okay before we try and fit it to a boat. This is the first boat we've actually had uh, air conditioning fitted to. Um, obviously, we're trying to keep the crews as comfortable as possible. So it's a new system and uh, we're still sort of evaluating it and making sure it does what it says on the tin. Yeah, it's looking really good. Um, it's all seems to be working as it should do, so hopefully once we've proved it for a few hours on the bench, we can go to the next stage of fitting it to a boat. OK, this is the wheelhouse of the boat. Um, we've got six crew normally on board. Um, five of those have each got a, a flat screen to control their relevant systems. And they're all controlled by a tracker ball and mouse, and they can uh, flip from screen to screen to check all the systems are working correctly. OK, what we've got down here is the survivor space. Uh, this is where anyone would go who gets rescued by the lifeboat. OK, so this is the nerve centre of the boat. These are the computers that run all the systems on board. And through we've got the tank space. OK, this is the engine room. This is the main power plant of the boat. And we've got two 1,000 horsepower marine diesel engines. The engine will produce huge amounts of data on fuel consumption and speed and it's data that Spencer needs for a particular project on the Tamar class he's working on. OK, what we're doing now is just going to fire the engine up and uh, double check with the diagnostics, make sure the idle speed's been set correctly before the boat goes away to station. When a crew are out in the middle of an Atlantic storm on a rescue mission, this is vital information. They need to know how fast they can travel on the fuel they've got. Spencer's work will tell them. Yeah, all seems OK. Back in his office, he begins to process the data from the engine. OK, this is a, a fuel curve I'm producing for the Tamar class lifeboat. Um, this 
Blaze's crew to work out how much fuel they're burning and, and how long they can run for on a full set of tanks. Um, and this is really a backup to the electronic fuel gauges they've got on board. OK, what I've got here is uh, basic data from some trials run on one of the boats, which gives me the fuel burn for those engines. So what we'll do is do a couple of runs of the boat. We'll measure the fuel burn for the port engine, fuel burn for the starboard engine. We'll take an average of that. Then we'll do the same for a second run in the opposite direction. Again, measuring the fuel burn for the port engine and starboard engine. Take another average. Uh, we'll put those two together and get an average engine burn of fuel. We'll then times that by two because we've got two engines in the boat and that'll give us an average of fuel burn at that speed for, for that boat. And then we'll do that for each speed we operate the boat at, which then gives us the data to draw the fuel curve. And um, what this curve uh, really does then is enables the crew to work out how far or how long they can travel for at what speed on a full tank of fuel. Mid-morning, and Spencer's on to his next job for the day. It's one that will test his ICT skills to the full. What we've got here is a remote engine display gauge. Um, it comes from the manufacturer just as a gauge, so in order for the crew to be able to use it, I've got to find an enclosure for it and also make it a usable piece of kit. Um, I've got a prototype here, I'm pretty happy with it, so I just need to source a new one online so that we can actually send it out to someone else for them to assemble the components together. First of all, he takes the gauge across the office to another computer that runs a computer-aided design program. Once he's created the 3D model, it's back to his own workstation to start looking for a supplier. Spencer's using an internet search engine to find a company who can manufacture the component. Once I've sourced a, an enclosure for it and I'm happy with the whole uh, package, what I then do is produce a, a CAD drawing for it, a computer design, um, an assembly drawing, and we can send the whole lot out to an outside company and they can actually make it and put it all together for us. One of the regular tasks of the marine engineer is troubleshooting, sorting out the problems that arise from the boat being on the water. The problems come to him as defect reports. Now, one of my roles is to, to deal with defect reports. Um, defect reports generated if the crews uh, experience a failure of some particular item on the boat. It could be anything from the windscreen wiper to the engine. Um, They'll fill in what happened, they'll send the form in to us, um, and then once that comes through to me, it'd be my job to investigate what happened, how it happened, and then what we can do to fix it and prevent it happening in the future. To us, this might look like a collection of junk, but for Spencer, these bits and pieces are a really neat aid memoir. Some of these bits, so these are past projects, little bits left over. Um, this was a switch I developed so that we could mount it onto a ball valve like this, and. Um, yeah tells the operators when the valves open or closed. Uh, got things like this where we had uh, corrosion problems, so the fittings are rotting out. Got items like uh, injector rocker arms where they failed and we had to discuss this with the manufacturer and get a, a modification put into place. Got a hydraulic coupling for the air conditioning pump we had to sort out and get a, the right size machined into it. There is a bit of uh, technical merit to it, is that uh, it can be a bit of a, a memory aid if you get a, a similar problem and you can sort of have a look at this and remember what you solved with that problem. One of my favourite little projects was a, a, a little salvage pump for the uh, Atlantic 75 class lifeboat. Um, it's just a little pump in a box basically. You never hear any complaints about it which usually means it's a good thing and everyone likes it. So. On a 
good day, you can be out at sea on a boat, you know, sort of nice sunny day and cruising around and, and doing that as part of your job. And, and it's not always just sat at your desk, you do, do get to get out there and actually see the boats themselves. This is the Lifeboat Maintenance Centre. Um, the boats you see here are stored here for relief duty or they're either here on passage to station. Um, some may even be here for, for minor repairs or uh, touch up, that sort of thing. We get requests for, for new pieces of kit in from operations. Um, they want something else on the boat. Yeah, okay, once we've understood what the problem is, um, we'll look at finding a part to, to solve that. Um, if we can't buy it from another company, then we'll have to design it ourselves using CAD. Um, and again, if we can't make it ourselves, then we'll have to go to a company outside that can make it for us and we'll buy that in and then fit that to the lifeboat. I need to find a replacement for this pump. Um, this is off-the-shelf item and it's not really suitable for what we need. So I've done some market research and I've contacted some, some other companies. Um, and they're now coming back to me with their recommendations um, and telling me which pump they think is more suitable. Um, I'm not entirely convinced by the information, so I need to check their specifications and the details of the pump, um, compare that to with what we actually need and what our requirements are and, and see if it will actually do what we wanted to do. Spencer has received lots of emails from different suppliers, all claiming to have the right product for the job. So he needs to use literacy skills to sort out the facts in the product catalogues from the opinions of their marketing departments. Based on people in this office, there's, there's a lot of routes into engineering. I myself came straight in A-levels and a university degree and got this job. There's other guys that have done BTECs, on-the-job training, uh, day release, that sort of thing. Me personally, I've always been interested in boats and this is why this job is so good for me, it's why I enjoy it so much, is it's a personal interest as well as just general engineering. The skills involved in my job are, firstly, you've got to be a very good communicator. You have to deal with a lot of people, colleagues, you have to work well with others. You've got to have good common sense, you've got to sort of know what you're doing and not make silly mistakes and be safe. Uh, and also a good sort of understanding of engineering generally, engines and how they work, and then be able to sort of be a bit hands-on and quite practical. Well, my next step is obviously I'm, I'm working towards uh, my chartered engineer. I'd like to work up to maybe principal here or into some sort of management role.